You know, some of the biggest conversations in the world of technology start here at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And the change makers, the thought leaders are all here under one roof in the heart of Barcelona. One of them is here with me, Rajan Magaria. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to you again. It's always a pleasure to have him on the show. But a lot of the conversations that start here, like I said, end up dictating the future of technology for the years to come. A couple of years were subdued here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona for obvious reasons. It's back, back with a bang. The last time we met and the last time conversations were happening here was all about 5G. Now, I hear a lot of murmurs of 6G as well. Do you think where we are placed in India and your understanding of the Asia and the India business, are we ready for that transition? We've just gotten into deployment of 5G. Where does the 6G journey begin? I think that's an interesting question. Uh, and I would say that this is that place where you would see the first of the glimpses and uh, some form of what is going to come over the next few years. Yeah. So I consider MWC as that one destination for anybody to go to look at what you should expect in the next few years. Yeah. Now, obviously, the cadence of any G is always typically around 10 years. We are in the fourth year of a 5G. So mm -hmm. that way, by a, by a simple cadence pers perspective, 6G is not expected for another six years yeah. or seven years. Having said that, Quite a few things which you would, as you walk around the Qualcomm booth and you get to see in terms of the technology we are, we are showcasing, these are early technology demonstrations which eventually could become a part of the 6G definition. Mm -hmm. right? 5G is here for the last four years. What you are going to see is a, quite a few more years of 5G yeah. taking up the scale. I consider 5G as two parts, a phase one and a phase two. We are probably at the end of the phase one of 5G deployments globally. And for India, we are probably starting 5G now. Mm -hmm. So over the next two to three years, you will see the scaling up of 5G across the globe mm -hmm. as most operators have scaled. And then additions on five, onto 5G, like millimeter wave, are going to see a ramp up in the second phase of the 5G. So for specifically for India, uh, I would say the advantage we had was being a two or three year behind, mm -hmm. we are able to implement a lot of things which the world probably had gone through. And I see millimeter wave as a major advantage for India to start rolling with. Sure. And, we, and like you said, things move very fast in this space as well. But we're two or three years behind. But with the quantum leap we've gotten with the 5G deployment now, let's put a number to it. How soon do you think conversations about 6G? Which India Mobile Congress edition are we talking about? 2024, 2025, where we can start talking about 6G seriously in India? I think conversations of 6G has already started. It's not that it's not there. We're talking about standards. The way it works is there are contributions to the standards, the releases which are going. We're talking about release 17 now. Mm -hmm. And as we contribute and we establish the standards, a definition, a clear definition of what 6G will entail mm -hmm. is expected to be somewhere closer in the next three to four years. Hey, again, but having said that, you will see part of these technologies which are demonstrated here would become essentially an ingrained part of 6G. Right. So whether they are 6G today, you want to call them 6G, or whether they'll be a part of 6G is an up for debate. But all the future you see here mm -hmm. is essentially a good candidate to be a part of 6G. So first it becomes the standards. It goes into standards. The standards mm -hmm. get formalized. We have yet to do a lot more of 5G, right? We have 4G. We have a lot of 5G to be yeah. still derive the benefits of full benefits of 5G. Yeah. And that is going to take the next few, maybe four to five years. You know, it's an interesting observation. We were at the Snapdragon Summit in Hawaii and a lot of interesting announcements out there as well. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 was one of the biggest ones, among other things. And what I find fascinating is as we attend tech events all over the world and brands have started launching phones with that 8 Gen 2 chip, in terms of that layer of innovation, and I must say this, I'm going to call everyone out on this. What that chip was capable of, we've already seen months ago. That really seems to be, for Qualcomm, the, the crown jewel in, in their entire product portfolio. Because I've seen a lot of brands now really marketing, literally, the core functions of that chip. Do you think, largely, when you see what, what other tech companies are doing, I know with Samsung, you guys have now got a partnership for the... S23 lineup, but do you think a lot more innovation is necessary by tech brands, especially smartphone manufacturers? I 
as a consumer you have every right to say what is that innovation which you see as a massive leap correct i would say in terms of technology the leaps are huge right okay. when you see a flip or a fold that itself is a huge thing right when you see ai right and the next innovations that are coming around ai mm -hmm. are going to be just mind boggling and as we we increase the compute capabilities as we increase the ai capabilities mm -hmm. of our our premium chipsets and bring them down across all the chipset platform the most of these innovations you will see will come around ai mm -hmm. and the use cases will reflect in multiple different ways right so what is one is the connectivity just 5g we saw that right and we may say that okay 5g is going to give you huge bandwidth what we are probably missing here is to acknowledge that this apart the connectivity there is a huge processing capability which is going on the chip correct and this processing capability or the compute capability or the ai capability is going to result in a lot of use cases mm -hmm. right which will be very very close to the consumer and they live with it for the next few decades you know talking about use cases and a catch phrase that that you uh, mentioned out there which everyone's talking about in the tech world and here of course at mwc happens to be ai and generative ai especially with what's happening with chat gpt bar and you know, every tech company seems to be rushing there are those conversations that are happening in mobile world congress with qualcomm as well i'm sure you do need that hardware capability to actually give you uh, a product like chat gpt and maybe give you more manifestations of it whether it's text image uh, humanoid robots i don't know uh, it's a fair thing and uh, as you yourself said that most of these innovations which you're seeing in the front the consumer is seeing mm -hmm. generative ai it absolutely needs a lot of compute power and the ai on the chip and you probably will see that coming in the subsequent generations of uh, of of all of the uh, snapdragon uh, top tiers you will see all of them being ingrained as a part because they will leverage the ai capabilities or the compute capabilities mm -hmm. of of the chip if you had to sum up this mwc with three top trends that you think are not gimmicks but genuinely game changers what could they be I think the innovation cycle continues I would say devices are there a flip and a fold or that sort of the devices and a rollable and a rollable well. ones I think there will be more conventional if you go around and see I myself am a little bit amazed that you see how many people are carrying a fold and a flip mm -hmm. right it's so new uh that's one second is some of the subtle things that are happening in the background which may not exactly manifest in a very clear distinguishable consumer let's say experience because you will take it so much naturally is the capabilities of the ai on the on the on the chip itself right right a third huge innovation which i see is more not exactly on the consumer side mm -hmm. but is on the network side i am seeing as you move around the radios are getting smaller mm -hmm. right they are getting more compact so the networks are evolving so quickly to handle the huge load of data and they are becoming coming closer to the consumers mm -hmm. so probably 5 years from now you might see you might almost miss seeing those huge towers which carried those bulky radios mm -hmm. and it could be one small radio which looks more like a a sort of a wifi router yeah. somewhere you may see that sort of small small form factor radios almost hidden and it will be like seamless to the exteriors of the building so that innovations are happening and we have some of them to showcase here well usually when we catch up it's in the humid weather in mumbai and this time it's in the chilly weather in barcelona but what an absolute pleasure to have you on the show absolute as always pleasure is mine thank and you and we hope Love you enjoy it. the congress thank you so much if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe